My name is Stephen Parry, as said. Um, I'm a change architect, uh, which, which basically means I help organizations design the organization, and more importantly, the culture. Um, we heard at the first speaker this morning saying that culture is very important, and what I'd what I've been working on for a number of years is that the organizational design and the measurement system is equally as important as the culture. They both go together. And in fact, the shape of the organization drives the culture as well. So there's a lot of uh, advantage to be gained for designing organizations for agile, or I like to call them adaptive people. And this presentation, I'm going to be taking um, a humorous look at some of the problems um, organizations have when they start going agile right across the business and then want the business to be agile to the outside world. And there are some very common mistakes in that transition from agile as teams to agile to business. And I want to use the metaphor of a chameleon to give us some ideas uh, for those managers who really want to drive this. Um, and there are some tips in here if you want to take Agile up to the business level and differentiate in the marketplace. I'll also talk a little bit about um, the dynamics of an adaptive business to give you an idea, a very quick idea. And I'm going to talk about purpose. Purpose is very, very important, and I'm going to talk about uh, a purpose that was put together by um, a very large organization that was going lean, Agile, Kanban, it had a whole mix of things in there. Um, and how they started to get everybody on purpose with this purpose. So I'll get straight into that. Okay, I'm going to do some statistics um, right away. Um, these statistics are coming from um, the Business Agility Institute. Um, I would recommend that you join up, it doesn't cost anything. But this is the report that they recently put out, um, and everything that's coming up here is, is found in here with a lot more as well. Okay, one of the things in the report, it's saying uh, most people are new to Agile, the vast majority, and they're new to taking it to the business level. So it's still very early days. Um, I've been doing it for a number of years, so I've got something to offer in terms of tips, but we can see, it's very, very short, less than three years, which is really, really short in terms of business transformation times. Everybody agrees that there are benefit, when I say everybody, the majority of people um, who express the preference. We get market success because of our responsiveness to customers, but that's only uh, a tip of the iceberg of the level of responsiveness that you can get, and I want to talk about that. All of these benefits, they go all the way down. And speed to market is still low. And I want to say, well, there are reasons why your speed to market is not there, and I'll talk about that shortly. Um, these are the challenges. You'll often see the challenges uh, posted. We saw them this morning. And, and it's interesting the order in which these happen. Because everybody's saying it's a leadership issue, it's an inappropriate organizational design, and if you look at mindset and culture change, it's way down on the list. And I want to say that actually the mindset and the culture change need to be top. And we heard that this morning. Okay, so we'll come back to those right at the end. So let me just take you out of that and take a humorous look at what organizations need to be thinking about when they start going to take Agile up to the business level. Okay, chameleons have been around 100 million years, so they know a little uh, thing or two about adaptation over time. Um, there are hundreds of different types um, out there, mostly in Madagascar, Africa and Europe and, and Asia. So the diversity is, is massive, but they all share very similar characteristics, and those characteristics I want to point out right now. Okay, the first one, I want to point out right now is about continuous scanning. Now, the one thing that you'd, you'd notice about a chameleon, if you watch one long enough, is the eyes are independent. And they, they put together a, a view almost 360 degrees around them. But if you notice them, even though they're looking in different directions, what they do is they'll move one eye first, and then the other eye, then they'll wait, then they'll move one or the other. 
And that is because they are scanning and they're integrating. What the scanning is doing is saying, right, I'm looking for something that's different out there. Is there an anomaly? Is that a friend or is that food or is that uh, a sexy lover? Okay, and that's what they're looking for. But their brain has to process that. So this is a low level scanning. So continuous scanning, looking for threats and opportunities is what you need to be doing as a business. But very often what I find is the business is often looking internally, particularly at times of transformation and they get caught out by the business. As soon as they've seen something, they focus. They're on you. They, nothing else exists. It's on you all the time. Because I am gauging now, I've got stereoscopic vision, which has just been interrupted. Stereoscopic <laughs> vision, because I am working out the distance between you and I've, I've Still working out whether you're a threat or an opportunity or a mate. Okay, and I've got to make that calculation pretty quick because there, there, there could be some, you know, misunderstanding, shall we say. So once you have that focus and you've determined, yes, that's the opportunity, I need to go for that. Now think about the business. There's an opportunity you want to go for. And actually you, you're thinking, well, let's go for it. Let's get the minimum viable product out and rush towards this. But a word of caution, what you need to do in, when there are new opportunities and you're going through a transformation is you need to keep a balance. And what is that balance? The tail here is, is a very heavy tail and it helps the chameleon keep balance in very precarious branches on the tree. And by keeping the balance, what I'm saying is the balance about today's job. You've got to continue to do today's work while you're trying to figure out how to do tomorrow's. If you put all your effort into thinking about what you're going to be doing tomorrow, you will lose sight of the day-to-day -day work. And I see so many organizations who get caught up about business tomorrow and the excitement of everything that they might be producing that they stop doing the stuff that keeps the business running. In other words, they've got the balance completely wrong and they fall out of the tree. <clears throat> so, having identified in this case something good to eat, you now see that this chameleon is doing something else. It's not just balance, it needs stability. So you need to stabilize yourself. So if you are going to go for that, that opportunity out there, you need to make sure the business is stable, that if you put an effort in, it's not going to fall down behind you. And you can see this, this chameleon is using its tail, its hands, to get stability. And ironically, this is what allows agility from a business perspective. It gives you that firm base to go out and execute fast with a minimal viable product, because you know you're firm. And at this point, when they go into market with new stuff, new stuff they want to test, and everybody's in involved in that, they often fall out of the tree because they're unstable. So these are all messages for the business leaders. The skin. There's a myth that you can put a chameleon in front of, um, say, a red board, and it'll go red. Well, it sort of does go red, but it's not because of camouflage. Okay, the females are very well camouflaged, but the males are the ones that, that change all these colors. Because what is happening is the male uses these to send clear signals. The reason it goes red is because it's a brighter color and it's, for th it's, it's a response to threats. It's a territorial marker, stay away, all right? And then if it's a mate, it says, look, I'm really good to mate with, and it, it, it creates its own patterning that the female will, will recognize. Okay, so as a business, you have to be sending clear signals, not only to, the, uh, to your business inside about what you're doing, but clear signals outside as well. Okay, because this is how disruption happens. You're, clear, you're threatening other people, so you need to be clear what, what's happening. 
Okay. And the other thing that chameleons use, both male and female use the colouring for, is, is to control heat. And it allows different absorption of, of the sun's radiation, obviously. And, and so this myth about it blending into the background, for the males at least, is absolutely untrue. But it gives us some, some messages about what we need to think about when we're starting to scale up. That's not the word I wanted to use. Where we wanted to take agility to the business level. Okay, let me just... I got a very short video that somebody who saw this presentation sent me. So make sure this goes. Hang on. What you, what you would, would see in this was, this is a chameleon. Um, it, it's on a barbed wire fence, and it, it had lost its tail. And it saw some prey on, on, on the, up above, and it knows it's out of distance. And it goes through a whole set of strategies to make, make sure it is stable before it strikes. And, and that brings all the things together. I'm very sorry that the video doesn't work for some reason. So what I'd like to do right now is just put that aside. One of the things I want to talk about are the organizational dynamics of an adaptive organization. Okay? Um, you need a culture that thinks this way. And I'll just give you a very quick graphic. It's about engaging and understanding deeply your customers and the market they're in. And it's no longer optional. And the more people in your organization that are engaged with the customers, the more potential for adaptiveness you have. It's a, there is a trend to keep most of the people away from the customer, but that is a trend that we have to break. The more people that are involved and understand the customer and the customer's environment, the more innovation you will get. So using methods to deeply understand and engage. And then we go on to learning and sharing. What I mean by that is we're bringing information from the outside world about what the customer's doing, what the customer is trying to achieve as a business, and what his goals for his business are should be your goals too. You appropriate the customer's business goals. And that's what you deliver. And it'll be important when, when I come to showing you the common purpose in a minute. So learning and sharing. Customer, the market they're in. If a customer says, I'm buying your product, so it gives me differentiation, increased market share. Well, that's how you test if your product's working. Not, that it met, not just that it met the spec. Leading and choosing. And this is enabling much lower down in the organization, managers and staff having seen the threats and opportunities, they can take action against those. But decision making is much lower down. And they can decide and prioritize which of those things they want to address. Because they've been through the leading and choosing, and they've chosen a handful of things to go, th go for. And we heard again that thing, uh, that phrase said this morning, just a handful of things and committing the whole organization to them and getting them done instead of 20, 30, 40, 50 projects. And nothing gets done. There's that old saying, start finishing and, st and stop starting. Absolutely applies at the business level. And then finally, improving and adapting. You can improve what you do, but adapting is changing what you do and how you do it. And that's how you stay in touch with the business in the outside world. There is what I call a climate or a culture. I prefer the word climate because a climate is how a team works within that climate. The culture of the business might be very different. All right? And this is the really big thing I want to say. The culture of the organization doesn't prevent you from doing agile or all those anything locally. You can create a local climate the local culture, all right? And you can sustain that until that spreads, until that changes the whole organization. Because there's one thing that I learned is that all cultures start as a climate, okay? Now, it might have started a long time ago, but what keeps a culture in place are all the rules, the regulations, the rewards, the recognition, and that is about keeping the culture the same. 
So therefore, the design of, of work, the design of the organization, is really what needs to alter in the right places to make this early climate, this team climate, become the company culture. This is the dynamic. We can see in the middle there's common purpose. And what I'm talking about here is big picture collaboration. Unless you have big picture collaboration with all your staff, they are not going to innovate. And what do I mean by big picture innovation? We are discussing the business problems, not just people who are talking about teams and working with each other. No, what business problems are we trying to solve? And everybody's involved in that. And I've been involved in setting up a lot of big picture collaboration um, forums, which happen every week. And people go away and work on that and come back. And they feed back what are the threats and opportunities. They become the eyes of the chameleon. So what we are doing in an adaptive business is interleaving continuous improvement, because we still want to improve that, with continuous change. So let me just show you that dynamic. We saw earlier on that the people in the business that do the real work need to be engaging and deeply understanding the customer and their environment. They then need to come back and say, well, what, what sense do we make of this? Is this an opportunity? Is it a threat? Do we need to respond in this way or do we leave it? And that throws up a whole set of ideas of what we might innovate. But then you need to choose. And that's when in the leading and choosing, and leading is done lower down. So there's recommendations to the management team. We want to invest in developing this, whatever it is that you've discovered. Now, for the most part, there are going to be improvements and there'll be no-brainers, because there's, there's no strategic change to your products and services. But every so often, and more often than you would imagine, there's something that's a real gem. You don't sit around and say, no, we don't do that sort of thing when there's a demand from the customers, because you've sensed it, your staff have sensed it. This is before the market is asking for it. You're using customer intelligence from your staff to, to look for those new opportunities, new niches. And then you decide, OK, we need to do this. So then you can see there's a decision point. We know what the common purpose is. We can either improve this, no fundamental change, but actually we need to have a, a bigger change. And that involves maybe introducing some new tools, new measurement systems, um, a new product design. It could be anything. So it, that needs a little bit more work. So you would use something like this. You would design and experiment with whatever that new innovation is. And agile people, skilled in agile, can do that very well. We've seen the opportunity. It meets our purpose. Right, let's develop something. This is not a team that's set up to do just this. This is you working in the normal day job. You're now working on this design team. And you take turns in that. And then you say, right, now we've got this. And now you need to engage back into the business saying, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. Remember that big picture story? We've now identified what this is going to be. We've now tested it. It's, there's a prototype. We now want to start deploying this in a much more systematic way. And then you need people to either train or help people adopt that new way of working sometimes, new practices, new measurement system, or new products or new services. And then it, it changes the organization. There's a step change. That's what those rings mean. There's a step change. And now we've got to do, improve that until something bigger comes along. And that switching and interleaving between change and improvement is natural. And it's the business opportunities that switch that on or off. And it's completely on demand. But there's one big thing. The managers who run the day-to-day -day business need to know that they might have to run the business differently, especially if you're introducing Agile, because they'll try to run it in their old way. They don't know any different. So they need space, time, and learning to adjust to new ways of working. Otherwise, whatever you bring in will be dead very soon. 
been going on about this common purpose. I think that most companies don't do what I call a common purpose. They do what I think is a waterfall purpose. What do I mean by that? Well, a bunch of them go up, to, up a mountain, they go into a room, they put wet towels around their head, they turn the lights off, and they, they come up with some brilliant purpose statement. Then they have a jolly good drink, and then they come down the mountain, and they come back into the business and says, this is our purpose, our new purpose. And everybody has to agree, so that's where we are going. That is not a common purpose. That is the executive purpose being cascaded, waterfall style, down to everybody. For many people, that has no relevance, so that they don't really take it in. If you ask most organizations, the people in the organization, what's their purpose, they, they don't tell you that often. Or if you, if you ask them, they all say different things. So this is a real one from a very large applications business who have something in the field of around about 25,000 developers, as well as all the, the development infrastructure and the IT and servers that manage that, the test environment. So this is a big company. So they put this together. There's a business purpose, employee purpose, and customer purpose. And we need to get a common purpose. So let me show how we did that. First of all, as they were all employees, we said, why do you come to work? Now, apart from the obvious, because I need the money, there are other things. And they put this statement together. And these, this is their words. They want to come to work to contribute with their skills, to be fairly rewarded. They want the environment to be secure and trusting. And it offers them challenges and the ability to grow and develop. Is that too much to ask? So just think about that purpose, where you are, and would your employees say something like that and compare to what you actually think it is? Is it trustful? Trust comes out on every measurement that I take in, in workshops. Just recently, trust was the biggest thing. The biggest barrier to trust is management must first become trustworthy. They are in the position of power. They must become worthy of their trust through their behaviors and their, their actions. You cannot go up to a workforce that you've beaten up over many years and now say, um, look, we've ch had a change of heart. You should now trust us and we should now collaborate and we'd like you to give us all your best ideas, please. That's not going to happen. And that's in the valley, that you stay in the valley of despair with that. Okay, contribute with my skills, fairly rewarded, secure and trusted environment. Okay, from the customer. Now understand what these guys were doing. They were selling really big enterprise-wide applications and small apps that went, went with that. Okay, so it's a big software company, big e ERP systems, which they've broken up into much smaller digestible bits now, after long year, many years of big enterprise systems. So they had to change the way they were working. But why were the customers buying your products? Okay, and those type of products, they talk to the customer and he says, well look, it's not just the applications that I, uh, that I want, I, I, I want it to strengthen my business. Okay, I want, it, I want it to strengthen my business in a way that differentiates me. And it provides a return on my investment. Is that too much to ask? So you ask them things like, so what, what differentiates you today? How can we, what other services or products can we provide you that would help you differentiate? This is a very different conversation. And who's having it are very different. We are talking about the staff who develop the stuff. Not the marketing group, not the chief exec, the staff because they are full of ideas. But if you've got an organization which is rigid, doesn't allow them to even talk, almost command and control, like you're not going to get that innovation. You cannot command and control creativity. 
So creating this environment where they do take decisions, we are trusting them. And the customer, so you, you would take measurements and say, well, let's find out how we can prove that you get a return on your investment if you use this right. And if they're not using it right, well, that's probably another service that says something about your product as well. So finally, for the business purpose, it was they provide software and services and they provide infrastructures if the customer wants them for that to run on. Now, those are three different purposes. The business purpose, the employee, and the customer. Yet, what most organizations do is they take a little bit of the customer, a little bit of the employee, and a little bit of the business, and they put that into one purpose. It's not. It's just an abbreviation of three purposes. So what the trick here was to say, well, how can we come up with a set of words that would, whichever box I was sitting in, as an employee, business manager, or the customer, I would agree with this purpose. I might interpret it slightly different because I have different ends, but the means and the purpose is the same. And you might not get there for a while because these are enough to start. And it was only six months later that they come back and said, let's have a go at that other one. Because by that time, what they had done is they looked at, well, what do we need to measure for our employees that we are providing that environment. So they created new measurement systems, not are you happy, okay? It's much more subtle than that. And therefore that gives you a phrase of and now asking questions anonymously, very different. And for the business, they needed to measure are they providing a stable Infrastructure, a robust infrastructure. Is that infrastructure safe? It's the safety aspect of that, or is it all wobbly? Then you need to pay attention, because if your infrastructure is wobbly, then the service to the customer is going to be wobbly. And finally, after six months, this is what they came up with. With pride, we re re relentlessly pursue and apply our insight, ingenuity, and technologies to create wealth and a secure future. Because that's what everybody wants. We're back to this. This is the top 10 list. The people who put this together, uh, the people who responded to this survey, 40% of them were in managerial roles. And I think it's ironic that they were complaining that they couldn't get the leadership to, to, to buy in, when they were the leadership. And it's a little strange there. But my message to you is, you don't need to have that top leadership on board. That's the old mindset. You have been enabled, the working methods of Agile enable you to create that micro environment. You allow it to test, you don't do anything that's absurd. You go through rigorous testing and management of that. And with the common purpose, you now go around and you start in looking at your measurement first. If you want to change your business, change your measurement to customer outcomes. And miraculous things will happen. You then think about the mindset and the culture. Chameleon effect. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.